I am in Rendsburg, a town at the Kielkanal in northern Germany. And behind me in the distance you can see the Rendsburg High Bridge on which the train lines from Hamburg to Rendsburg and then further on to Denmark crosses the Kielkanal. And um, under this bridge was, uh, is the recently... What you just saw there was my first ever attempt at speaking in front of a camera. It was so bad that I figured it would be better to just create a voiceover when editing the video. I'm still such a terrible speaker that this is probably going to take me quite a couple of takes until I get at least acceptable quality. Anyway, I kept that outtake in because I found it funny. What I was actually trying to say is that last week the Schwebefähre, or suspended ferry, under the bridge was reopened after six years of repair work. The proper English term is transporter bridge. Suspended ferry is just a translation of the German term, which fits very well in my opinion. And saying the transporter bridge under the bridge was reopened is kind of, confus uh, kind of confusing. To avoid further confusion, I will refer to the high bridge as bridge and to the transporter bridge as ferry in this video. So let's talk about the bridge first, because the ferry wouldn't even exist without it. Now, a high bridge simply is an unusually high bridge, typically where traffic has to climb significantly to cross it. This is inevitable when you want ships to pass under it in the notoriously flat north of Germany. The Rendsburg High Bridge has a clear height of 42 meters and the trains must climb to 42 meters as well. Because trains cannot go uphill very well, large ramps are necessary on both sides of the bridge. On the northern side, this ramp forms a large loop to get the required 4.5 kilometers of track for the climb. This may seem a bit weird first, as it adds about 5 minutes to your journey. On second thought, the reason for the loop becomes quite obvious. The train station was there before the canal was built, and building the loop simply was easier than moving the station. Originally, the rail line crossed the canal on a pivoting bridge, but when the canal was widened in 1913, the high bridge was built instead, because the expected increase in traffic would have made another movable bridge impractical. Trains and ships can pass each other at the same time on the high bridge, unlike on a movable bridge. When traveling south from Flensburg to Hamburg, the ramp loop becomes a bit like the lift hill of a roller coaster where you keep climbing until you are high up over the city. A little fun fact is that when trains still had open toilets, these had to be locked when crossing the bridge because the locals did not like feces raining down on their houses. Anyway, enough of the bridge, and now for the thing that differentiates it from special to unique. There are only 8 suspension ferries left in the world today. A suspension ferry, or transporter bridge, or however you like to call it, is a system with a large bridge-like structure spanning a waterway, and a platform suspended underneath it, which shuttles between the two banks, just like a ferry. I say bridge-like structure instead of just bridge, because the Rendsburg Transporter Bridge is the only one in the world that has traffic on it as well, and not just on the platform under it. The difference between transporter bridges and cable cars is that transporter bridges have fixed rails on, rig on a rigid structure, as I say, bridge-like while cable cars just run on steel wires. The transporter bridge was invented by Alberto Palacio to link two districts of Bilbao in northern Spain. The ramps of a high bridge like in Rendsburg would have ruined the scenery of the city, and a movable bridge wasn't an option either for the same traffic-related reasons why the high bridge in Rendsburg was built. What he came up with is the now World Heritage sited Puente de Vizcaya, a simple beam high up over the river Nervion, which is tensioned by cables on both banks, making the entire structure slim and elegant. Alberto Palacio was mentored by Gustav Eiffel after all, and I think you can guess what was built by and named after him. Anyway, a platform suspended at street level allowed an easy river crossing for pedestrians and horse carriages. The Puente de Vizcaya was built in 1893 and cars weren't a thing yet. You may ask yourself why they didn't just build a normal ferry. The estuary of the river Nervion is tidal, which would have made a normal ferry impractical. Tom Scott did a great job on explaining this in his video about the Newport Transporter Bridge in Wales. You can watch it with the card in the top right corner. The other six surviving transporter bridges are located in England, France, Argentina and another one in Germany. All of these have in common that they are located on tidal rivers. Rendsburg is located on the Kiel Canal, which has locks on both sides in Brunsbüttel at the North Sea and in Kiel Holtenau at the Baltic Sea. This makes the water level very stable and the banks of the canal aren't murky either. So a normal ferry would have worked perfectly well too. There are in fact 13 normal ferries crossing the Kiel Canal, and I guess that the Rendsburg Transporter Bridge was just built because it wasn't much additional effort to put the suspended ferry under the train bridge that did exist anyway. Just like all these 13 other ferries, the Rendsburg Transporter Bridge can be used free of charge, although it is more of a landmark and a tourist attraction than an actual mode of transportation. The nearby tunnels and normal bridges carry way more car and pedestrian traffic than the Transporter Bridge anyway.
These tunnels and bridges proved vital when the transporter bridge was out of order for six years, following a collision with a small cargo ship in January 2016, which injured the only passenger who was on board then. The original platform from 1913 was damaged beyond repair in that crash, and because German bureaucracy, it took over two years until a contractor was even hired to build a replacement. That accident also rose the question of what the suspension ferry actually is. Until then, it was treated as watercraft, just like any other ferry. This means that the operator required a captain's license and that he had to adhere to Colric. I don't know if that was changed now, but the suspended ferry still is equipped with AIS and navigation lights just like a ship, although it makes sense regardless if it is considered as such or not. To keep this video at least a bit in line with the general topic of engineering on my channel, we can take a quick look on how the suspended ferry works. It runs on two rails, which are placed next to the train tracks on top of the bridge. It has four bogies, each with one driving and one rolling wheel. The power for the traction motors is supplied by four third rails, so it runs on triple phase AC with a separate neutral. Along the steel wires on which the platform is suspended, you can also see two yellow cables. I guess that these contain the wiring for controlling the platform. When docked, the platform is held in place by this large pin under it to prevent it from swinging in the wind. All of this is nowhere near the level of detail that I usually cover in my videos, but I couldn't get much more information out of it by just looking at the suspended ferry. Getting a look behind the scenes would allow me to make a much more in-depth video, and some shots on top of the bridge would be awesome too. The safety precautions to actually go there would be severe though, so I guess it's very unrealistic for me to ever get the chance to do such a thing. To keep watching, you can pick from these recommended videos here. I often change the videos in the end screen, so there's not much point in saying which particular video is where.